Welcome everyone to the main journey, a way for you to join me on a learning journey through life. My name is Samuel Main and today we welcome Emma Mukelhini to the show. Welcome Emma and thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Love it. Emma, you're a fiery fellow redhead and I know you're partial to a glass of wine too, maybe even yeah. two glasses. Sometimes two, sometimes two, yes. Love it. Sometimes even three. Depends. Like a minimum of two. There we go. <laughs> you have coached hundreds of women over the age of 40 through your world class online nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle business, Team EMW. Perfect. <laughs> Nicely done, mate. Uh, we spoke last week regarding the very high level of service in which you provide to your current clients and the incredible growth that you have had in your online business. From what I've seen, now earning more in a single month than you used to in a year for your fitness business. However, I want to go back to where this all began for you, your transition from your corporate life at free, I think it was, to then starting your coaching business. Reflecting back to this time and this uh, ultimately career change, can you give me an insight into how this transition and change came about? Yeah. So I need to dig into the, the yeah, brain memory bank here. So how did it all begin? So it, kind of, it actually started probably a couple of years before I did it. Um, I'd had my son who is now 10 and went back to work. And my, my body was just shit. I was so uncomfortable, I was overweight. I had, and I had always been used to being thin, fairly active, never really had to consider anything to do with fitness or health. And then suddenly it was, it was quite, a, quite important for me. But it was, more, it was more than the physical. It was like, I suddenly wasn't turning up for my team. I wasn't standing up for me at work. I wasn't, you know, I just wasn't, being assertive in any way whatsoever I was kind of hiding behind other people not not just not put myself out there and I was like this needs to change and went joined a gym got a personal trainer and she had actually she had actually done the journey that I have now and she had been a, a project manager which is what I was at the time program manager and then she'd given it all up and been a personal trainer I was like wow people do that like people actually do that and I was like oh man that would be amazing but I was like there's no way I could do that no people like me don't do that you know that whole kind of yeah it's that, like a dream. E that ego mindset thing of you know people like me um and then I was like I'm just gonna do so I did my personal training qualification in the background just for more of a knowledge thing and then there's all these rumors about organizational change through in the workplace. And I was like, that means redundancies. And there was a few I didn't get to go. Um, and eventually it got to a point where I was like, no, this is what I, I, I want to do this. But it mean at the time it meant that I had to, I knew that I didn't want to go and work in a gym and I didn't want to work for somebody else. And I didn't want to have to be, I wanted to do it for me. But that meant I had to move this is quite drastic. I had to find a house, a new house with a garage to be able to do this, right? So I was looking back, it was like, oh my God, I don't know what even got me to this point. But so took my redundancy, bought a new house, but I had to do it very, very tight for timelines because the mortgage company couldn't know that I was at risk of redundancy of because they wouldn't give me a new mortgage and it was all the money. So I managed to buy a new house with a big garage and then I was like, shit, I actually don't have a job anymore because I've just taken that redundancy package. Oh, shit. Um, but to start, just started, just like, the, I think the hardest thing at the beginning was actually putting money out there and saying in a local Facebook group, I've just opened personal training studio, doing starter rates, is anyone interested? No clue about social media other than as a, a user, an end user, no clue about advertising, no clue about marketing. And because it was it's a fairly small town, but because I only wanted to coach women, I only wanted to coach people like me, it was in a personal space. Um, so those wasn't in an open gym. I was booked out within two weeks, three Love weeks. It. And it was brilliant. Like it was absolutely amazing. I was like, I get to wear gym clothes all the time. This is brilliant. And I get to dot in and out of the house. Um, 
and that was in the August, by the time it got to the December, when it was minus five at six o'clock in the morning, it wasn't so, it yeah. was like, oh, this is, this no. is hard. Um, so yeah, it was a huge change. The family, my husband is so supportive and his mantra is doing, if we can afford it to, to do it and you think you can do it, then do it. Um, wow. So I'm very lucky in that respect. My, <laughs> my parents really don't, they may have thought oh my god you're a crazy arsehole why are you doing this but like my mom always raises the point that since I was very small my phrase has always been I can do it myself so I've always yeah. been fiercely independent and I've all, always if I'm going to do something I'm going to do yeah. it so yeah. nobody I don't think anybody really had Doubt. doubts other than your mental but did you yeah. have fears absolutely like oh my god this I've just bought this massive house with this massive garden and I don't have an income to like an actual formalized income and luckily I did end up having an income because I was then self-employed but it's that there was always that little bit of fear and I think probably every single person that's self-employed has had this is like, what if this all ends tomorrow yes and it was actually ultimately that fear that got me thinking longer term about you know is this a sustainable lifestyle that I have now is um what happens if I break a leg and I actually can't actively coach well I probably could with a broken leg but maybe something worse um and that got me thinking about the longevity yes you know of personal training for me and that's kind of what got me thinking got my spreadsheet out and started <laughs> what if what if what if, what if? Back to project managing days yeah and I'll, then I'll, I think actually having project management training yeah. and experience is a brilliant thing to have when you're setting oh, up right. your own business um so yeah it was scary exciting challenging tiring but the best thing that I've ever done so all the emotions all was the there emotions. any specific triggers that like was the catalyst for the change in the corporate or even for the change almost in your fitness business to be like, okay, I have to do something. Was there something that jumped out or was it just a gradual process for you? I think it all, it'd been shifting from being employed to being self-employed was quite, was gradual. I was exceptionally lucky where I worked in three. I worked with the best people ever. Like I'm best friends with a lot of them still to this day. And that was probably, if I didn't have that there, I would have left a lot earlier. Yeah. Um, and then I was in, through various restructures, I ended up in a, in a structure with a, a leadership team that I was just like. Get me out. And that was that, like getting to your late thirties and that's the first time you've experienced poor leadership. So actually pretty good going. Yeah. Um and that was the trigger for me going, nope, I am not living out the rest of my working life yeah. in a situation that could be like this. Um so that was the trigger there. And I there was just there was one individual that just was backstabbing everybody and bitching about everybody and I was just like, nope, don't like this very much. Um so that was the the trigger that really took me out of that one made you make some moves yeah and then the trigger for taking my fitness business online was the cold it was seriously cold in that garage and it was um getting up at half past five to go and coach people and then I was still coaching at eight o'clock at night yes. nine o'clock at night and like I think that was that's fine and I had the expectation that, that was okay but I was really I was busy like I was coaching 30 hours yeah. a week plus also doing you know nutrition guides for people and starting to look at you know the mindset stuff which was it was quite early on that I figured out that actually do you know what PT isn't what my niche needs PT yeah. is, is actually the, one of the final things on the list of what they need um so I was doing all these additional qualifications in the background as well I was just I was just knackered and I was just like I gave up corporate to have more of a, a family base and be with my family and have freedom but I've just traded for something else and I was just like no 
something needs to shift here. And that's when I first met you. And there we are. Yeah. When you when you look back at that, because it sounds like you were actually able to get a, a pretty large client base pretty quickly. Yeah. And that alone must have taught you so many lessons just about handling people, managing people, you know, in that coaching relationship, which is actually so important, I think, in those early days for when you're starting yeah. out. Um, you know, a lot of people, we talk a lot about high ticket and high ticket coaching, and a lot of people jump straight to that. But those fundamental lessons that you must have learned on those early days, um, you know, set you up perfectly for what you stepped into next. Do you remember, was there any like funny events or funny fails um, when you look back at those early days of, of coaching? Or even as you were like starting your business? No, nothing that really comes to mind that I can think of. I remember, you know, those the, the many people that had jumped from personal trainer to personal trainer to personal trainer of saying, oh, they didn't work. What they said didn't work. What they said didn't work. And as if I had been a brand new to the to the world of work personal trainer, I would have just said, yeah, what they did and didn't work. But actually, like, being able to turn around to people and said, there's a common denominator here, and it's you. So what do you think the issue actually is? And that, like, I suppose being ballsy enough in some instances, yeah. like, to actually turn the tables back and shine a light on, on people, not just blame it on yeah. external forces, so things like that. Um, but the bit at the beginning about putting yourself out there, there was... It's very, managing your clients was very similar to managing my team. You know, it, it's a two-way conversation. It's it's the buy-in. It's the, it's the, you know, I will coach you. And there will be elements of, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what to do until mm -hmm. you do it. Um, and I think that from what I had seen in the global gym PT and world, it was just very impersonal and everybody was just clamoring to work with anyone. And I didn't want to work with anyone. I didn't want to work with men. I didn't want to work with teens. I, I just wanted to work with women that just wanted to get fitter, stronger and healthier. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting actually, because when you're now looking at it, you almost um, subconsciously were making the right decisions. You were niching down. And yeah. who you wanted to work with absolutely you were you had the courage to put yourself out there you also then had the um ultimately the strength to demand higher standards from clients and confront them in you know some of these situations which is what they need so that you can actually help them um and for some people that can take years to learn yeah. it sounds like this happened, oh, for, yeah. you, like, happened <laughs> for you like in, in the first uh the first month um so let's delve into our first call and when <laughs> the one is that the one where you made me cry, Sam? It might be. It might be. Uh, so just to set the scene here, I was <laughs> I was uh, I was working for a coaching company that helped uh, online coaches and personal trainers build an online business. And I had a coaching call, I think it was with Emma. And we are going back now. I think this was 2017, maybe 2018. So not like a crazy amount of time ago, um, but I remember our first call, which we established you were charging £150, I think it was at the time, for your 12-week program for clients, yeah. which at the time we worked out for the amount of hours and the amount of work you were putting in was £3 an hour. Shameful. Which, Shameful. Compared to, which I think would have been more than half what minimum wage would have been at that time. I don't even um, know. How did you go about changing your money mindset from then? How did things change around for you? God. Honestly, I see, think looking back, it's a whole, and at the time you don't think you're making big jumps in anything, do you? You don't think that, but that's that was only five years ago, four years ago, five years ago. And like now I am I am coaching people on money mindset like it's just mental it's mental um so how did I go about changing it 
Well, basically, I realised that I didn't want to be poor. Like, <laughs> yes, I want to help people, absolutely. But, you know, what... Like, very early on, I knew how powerful what I did could be because I had been in the receiving end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd done it myself. And I knew that even from... Like, you know, every people will do things that's going to improve their health or their wealth or their relationships and all areas for me improved because I put myself out there for promotion because I got confidence back my relationship with my husband improved so I felt more attractive um health wise just probably minimizing all future risk but um knowing having that knowledge makes you think well actually do you know what it is worth investing in yourself to get even just one of those things Mm -hmm. so having that shift certainly helped and then the actual act the actual act of changing prices was terrifying terrifying so I remember I had done patched together this 12-week program 150 pounds and it contained the bare bones of essentially what I teach now um and I had sold maybe 30 of the, I'd done three different cohorts of 10 and saw some really good results but I had a lot of dropouts or people just can't couldn't wouldn't do their updates or wouldn't check in or anything and now I know why it's because they weren't invested they should yeah. never have been in the first place but anyway and I can remember working with you guys and coming in I had that call with you and it was just like that oh, this is not the life that I want for myself this is not why I'm in this um went through all the trainings and I was like right what's a nice number what feels good and I was like 480 and I think I'd message you with 480 you're like no you might as well just said get in the sea just get in the sea shop and eventually I think you or somebody in the team had said 1480 and I was like (laughs) no so we settled on I think we settled on about 880 pounds and I remember the first call that I did at that and I think I can't remember who it was it said just talk just talk to yourself as you go around the house you're going into the bathroom 880 880 just practice saying that number until it flows off the tongue and I also teach this to people now and the first call that I did and I got to so we're going to do this we're going to do that this is results da, 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 da. Uh, investment is 880 and she went Cool. Do you take credit cards? And I'm just like, <gasps> that was <a> panic. <laughs> like seriously, I was just like, I come off the call and I cried. Come off the call and cried. And I think that's really, really common. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have this whole, this is really taking me out my comfort zone. And then you have that relief, don't you? And like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this stuff works. Yeah. Um, and the girl, the lady got incredible results. Um, and then the next person that I had a call with signed up at 880. And then the next and the next. And then I was like, okay, let's go up. And we went up to 1280. And people were still investing. People were still getting amazing results. Um, so, yeah, it was just. And, and it, now, every, even now, every time I do a, a jump, I'm like. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting that build up. So I think in the high ticket coaching space anyway, it's so much hard work to get there. And then as soon as you have that first one, first couple that come through the door, I think that's that first moment of realization of like, whoa, I can do so much. There is so much potential here. And that's like then a a confronting feeling as well, is that that change. Mm -hmm. For you, as you started to bring on more and more people, what were then some of the challenges that you faced or what were some of the fears that you had when like actually things started to go in your way? <laughs> I got to the same bit again. I was like, where's my time gone? <laughs> Here I am. I'm no longer in the garage at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm behind my computer desk at five o'clock in the morning. So it was very much, uh, right. But by this point, I was getting more confident in mm-hmm. my own gut feeling that it was okay to say, do you know what? I'm really busy. I need to find a solution to this problem. Yep. Um, and I hired a VA, Lisa, who I'm still working with to this day. She is like, she's just incredible. And she, Lisa's actually now, she started as, she had four clients. 
now I don't know how many she's got she's got more than four she's got people working for her um she's progressed her business so we've kind of grown as a team amazing um at the same time but yeah going through that being able to make decisions quicker rather than humming and hawing going who am I to, who am I to have a virtual assistant who am I to need a, a coach um and you start trusting that you do know shit and if you now now I have enough confidence to say when I don't know something and put my hand up and go I, I don't know what it is that I need to yeah. some somebody give me a hint what it is without sitting and I think I don't, I don't know if it's a female trait I think it's quite a female trait of that I can do it myself I'm a control freak <laughs> I must I must do everything um and certainly I find that true with all our clients um because you attract just you don't you, you <laughs> got lots of lots of control freaks um but being vulnerable enough to say no I can't do this myself and I'm just going to save myself time and energy and, and get somebody to do it now and it's yeah. that was a game changer that was just like wow yeah love that we'll definitely delve some more into some of the business journey in a sec but before I forget you mentioned at the start that you weren't in a healthy place yourself when you was at corporate mm -hmm. and then you've now been on this uh, entrepreneurial journey what's your health journey been like throughout this as you've kind of hit each uh, each roadblock health wise uh fine yeah fine. i've found that i am more from an aging point of view like i am more susceptible to lack of sleep yeah and that really impacts me now whereas mm -hmm. 10 years ago I could get by yeah four or five hours a night most nights and be absolutely fine and now that is not the case at all um like back in the days when I was working at three it was a very big party culture so there was a lot of drinking there was a lot of clubbing there was a lot of nights out there was excess in your hotel um, no come on <laughs> um and now obviously I work with myself so I don't really go oh, I'm just gonna take myself out to the pub after work um but certainly I now take a lot more care of myself so I'm I'm I practice what I preach with my clients so all yeah. the stuff that we teach them habit stacking these are all things that I do and I'm not perfect um and I never claim anybody should be perfect. It's always going to be, everything is always a work in progress. Everything can always be that little bit better. Um, and some days it's shit. Some days I'm not had enough sleep. Some days I've maybe eaten crap. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm always getting a fruit and veg, my protein, calories are on track and everything's fine. Get yeah. my steps. So. Yes, yeah, the reason I ask is I know, especially in the early days of someone developing a business, you know, the risk to burnout is huge. Mm -hmm, I can um, see that. We see that. We see that so much. Um, I'd love to know. You mentioned about the journey and the changes for yourself, but what's been like probably the most incredible result or story that a client of yours has actually gone through? Helen springs to mind. So Helen won't mind me sharing her story um, because she's hugely proud of what she has done. But Helen came to me and she'd gone through a really horrible time with her health. She was she was chronically fatigued, constant pain. The doctors were thinking uh, ME and she was just really overweight, really unhappy, crying every single day, not functioning at work. Um, size 18. And there's actually, a, on my, if anybody wants to go to my personal Facebook page, there's a, a picture on there, maybe three posts down. Um, but she came to me and she cried down the phone and she was like, I need to talk to my husband about how do we make this work financially because we don't have a lot of income, we don't have a lot of disposable cash. Um, she spoke to her husband now normally I would say eight times out of ten if somebody's speaking to their husband they're never going to be in they're never going to be in because the minute a loved one goes kind of goes raises their eyebrows women especially will back off and go oh no I can't do that that's going to impact everybody else so much no no no, no. Yeah. and it just 
put others. That's like the problem of putting everybody else first. So she knew that that was going to happen. But our husband, bless him, um, he's going on this journey with her. He basically said, you're doing it. If this was one of the kids, you wouldn't even be discussing this with me. And that's how I feel about you. So Helen is now, she's now a size eight. That she has, she is competing in strong women competitions. Amazing. She pulls cars with <laughs> That's so badass. She pull, she literally pulls cars with the rope. But not only that, she has retrained yeah. as a personal trainer. She's doing her nutrition qualifications. She's already a mental health spe- specialist. That's her job. And she's coaching with us. Yeah. Amazing. The goal of her being a full-time coach. Absolutely love that. So obviously that's a unbelievable journey. And there must have been so many ups and downs. Yeah. In that. If there's potentially someone there now and they're looking to make that change, you know, with your program, what steps do you actually take people through? What does that journey look like from, you know, essentially a business perspective? What, what's that path for those people? Well, kind of four, three key components in what we do, but everything leads into identity shift. So becoming the person that we want to be through changing how we think, changing our patterns, changing our beliefs, changing, digging into these emotional blocks and and reframing them. Um, So that's the kind of overarching principle. And we do that, we do a lot of work on mindset. We do a lot of work on limiting beliefs, on self-sabotage, on our future self, on our whys, on our goals. And then Nutrition has obviously got a huge part to play. Yeah. And you've got to remember, I work with women over 40, so ho- hormones are a huge, huge um, part of what we do. But we use nutrition. For most people, we will go down the calorie path. We will, we're trying to create healthy relationships with food. We're creating a long-term way of eating. But we also want to be eating for energy. Like I am really no I'm 44 this year and I'm noticing changes in my body I'm noticing changes in my energy I'm noticing that I get more fatigue quicker yep. so it's being able to use our nutrition in that way not just for losing weight um because if it's, you're just eating for losing weight it's never going to be a long-term success um and we also have to remember that a lot of our clients have kids so we, we want to break the cycle our generation we're brought up with diet clubs with our parents, our mums going to Scottish Slimmers, Slimming World started. Everything was low fat. We had to eat Vitaly. It was There were diet pills left, right and centre. So a lot of the women that we work with now have gone through that. And that has been the start of their relationship with their bodies and not feeling good enough because they're not stick thin. And we want to be part of breaking that cycle for their kids so that they are seeing their mom having a really good healthy relationship with their body with food and with exercise um and that all starts with food yeah um exercise hugely important we get people lifting home-based lifting so we don't recommend people go out and buy rigs and pull up bars and a whole crossfit box but you know dumbbells kettlebells and we'll program and the i think the point that we're trying to make with exercise is People just you overuse exercise to lose weight. And it's not, exercise isn't the best tool for losing weight. Your nutrition is, but exercise is an absolute non-negotiable for long-term health. And we want to make sure that we are going to be the granny that can go and play in the park with the grandkids, not the one that's stuck in the sofa, can he move? Yeah. Or if she falls over, she needs a, a buzzer to get somebody to come and get her. So, um, and the other main bit is all about um we call it recovery and repair protocols but stress management how do we deal with stress most people who have been trying to lose weight describe themselves as being all or nothing or being really good and then something happens and it's not the fact that something happens because something is always going to happen that is life but it's how do we deal with what happens and how do we not go back to these existing patterns so expect failure yeah shit's going to happen but that isn't reason enough to just go, oh, well, I'll just go and, you know, lie in the sofa and eat a KFC bucket and drink three bottles of Shiraz. You know, it's like, yeah, shit happens. Acknowledge it. What, is there anything that we could have done about that? No, probably not. 
but how do we move forward and that's how we cope with things that changes love that what would you say then are some of the biggest mistakes that someone who's at that starting point what are some of the mistakes that they're potentially making or is there anything that jumps out or like a common pattern that you see because i think this also does apply to guys as well i know that yeah. it's mainly for you obviously your niche is women but you know i think there's a lot of takeaways there still too i think a lot does depend on the on the niche on the type of client for men you know working a lot on like a lot of men might not particularly like working on mindset it might sound a bit woo woo and a bit like oh that's just for the birds but being able to position things in a way that it still gets worked on I don't know how you do that um but everything starts like everything is mindset everything like how you get up and deal with the day as as your mindset how you go to the gym and work out with intent or whether it's a wasted workout it's your mindset yeah. and I think from what I've seen maybe of newer people going into coaching not understanding how valuable that is and how much it's needed potentially is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen or not having a an understanding of what mindset actually is and how to talk about it how to coach it because if you just say to somebody you need mindset coaching like, yeah. what does that actually mean <laughs> like what what is yeah. that um and the appreciation that mindset needs to be worked on every day for the rest of your life that's not a right I've done a mindset course that's it good to go yeah, it, it has to get worked on every single day. And that's something, money mindset, that's something that I've been working on quite a lot this past year, I would say. Because I was like, until working with you initially, money mindset was just like, eh, oh, I want to have money. Yep, fine. But I'd always been salaried, so it was never really a thing. Then this undercharging thing. And then this whole going into higher ticket and increasing my prices, increasing my prices. And then getting to a point of going, where do I go now? You know, I'd always said, oh, I just want to pay, earn enough to pay the mortgage and be quite comfortable. But actually, that's not what I want. You know, I want, I do want freedom. I want to go on nice holidays. I want to have nice handbags. I want to get my, well, I need to get my hair dyed pretty frequently now the rate agrees but you know i want to be able to go to the address and do it there's wisdom coming through that's all <laughs> wisdom coming through um so that's an area that i've been digging into and that's really heightened that thought of yeah that shit needs worked on every single day yeah it's really interesting because i look at what does someone need to do and for you that initial thing was investing in yourself mm -hmm. you know right back when and that was then you know also what kind of started to move things forward or even putting faith in yourself and taking that leap from the corporate to to starting your own business um and i think we a lot of people don't actually realize how little they are investing into themselves yeah and when you make that first intentional investment it doesn't need to be anything crazy high but you know an actual investment into making you a better human um that brings so much awareness to mm -hmm. some of the challenges some of the trauma some of the you know the the mindset challenges that people have um and that starts the ball rolling and once you've opened yeah. that casket then it's like you know it's a roller coaster from mm -hmm. from that moment on and you realize the importance of you know developing that mindset and um ultimately like that's what everything is focused about the fulfillment that you have in your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. you know is, is absolutely absolutely huge so you mentioned it there obviously you know business is rocking lots going on um you working with hundreds of women um having some amazing amazing impact um what are you working on at the moment or what are you currently you know working towards uh -huh. so we are I've, I've just invested in a new mentor course Thing. Mm -hmm. so my plans are we're diversifying slightly so we have always just done one program called it was body balance blueprint and earlier on this year we created a new program similar but purposely for women with fibromyalgia or, 
or fatigued or um and we kind of I started thinking about this is still quite a time consuming business for me because I do all the consultations myself yeah um and I was faced with do I want to keep things as they are and employ somebody to take those calls off me and it sounds wonderful it sounds wonderful that you can just simply have somebody that comes in and does all these calls converts all these new clients but the reality is not that the reality is that it's hard to find people that I am going to trust yeah. with my baby which is my business yeah. but also that I trust that they will bring in the right people because I say no to people quite a lot because I don't believe they're committed or I don't believe that they've got realistic expectations of what we're going to do and I don't like that's on me like haven't I do have to yeah. learn to let go at some point but um and plus the fact I wasn't overly certain that that's how I wanted the business to be you know I think there's I can I can do more for more people in a different way um and also I've got this sense and this is another thing so your your pal George data over emotion kind of knocked a little bit of my gut instinct away and I've only I've, the last year I've started to trust a little bit more on intuition and yeah, read into okay. things a little bit more in the marketplace and I'm not overly certain how I how our business is just now just offering high ticket as a long-term successful strategy right so just that's just intuition I could be wrong yeah um and it's just some things that I'd sense from people saying and looking at other people in online so what we're doing now is we are still going to have what well, it's going to be called eat move win elite and it's going to be a high high air ticket program so it's going to be slightly longer it's going to have a lot more contact a lot more external so not just physical coaching it's yeah. going to be more i think i've said this to you before that one of our old clients has said what you do it's it's life coaching with a hot body bias and I was like yeah it is ultimately so it's going to be more along those lines Brilliant. and it's going to be significantly more expensive than what we're currently charging but that doesn't help me with the being able to help lots and lots of people yeah. so we're bringing what we do now into more of a of a group coaching slash course um program which is going to be being very realistic it's not going to be until September yeah it's in Texas. I, think, I think it'd be ready before then but I don't want to launch something in July and August because it's not ready it's you're past that it's just, it's just dead time for yeah. like women are doing stuff with the kids and they're on holiday they don't really want to be focusing on this stuff so yeah so that's the plan um we I've got a few free courses that I've built that one of which is live. I've got another one um, that's half built and I'm building a website. Yes. It's it's brilliant. It's the importance of, uh, or you kind of demonstrated that you don't need a website right away. <laughs> I know um, what you don't, you don't, um, but it's got to the point if I'm having multiple products. Yes. With multiple one. different niches i need to be, have a single place to be able to articulate that because my facebook group is busy i've got over five thousand people in there there's i'm doing posts clara's doing lives yeah. clients are talking about the success parts. prospects are, there's just so many different um conversations happening and i think i might slightly be ocd um and i just wanted one place that had that i could point people to so oh, the other thing, oh, I'm doing something else as well. So I've started a bit of a side hustle where um, it's called the Fabulous, Future Fabulous Fempreneurs, and it's for aspiring and new female Love coaches it. going into yes. the, either like into coaching or, or course building. So that's just a little thing that I'm doing. Busy, busy, busy. Uh -huh. Love it. Love it. I just want to go back to that data over emotion um, part because I think that's been a huge shift overall in like the industry mm -hmm. is people more moving towards that connection 
with a coach and a connection with the people that they're working alongside. Um, and that's something that ultimately has pretty much stemmed my entire business is I'm dependent yeah. on that emotion and that connection that I have with people because it's a high level of contact. Um, I'm not looking for just volume and that, that data. Um, so that's really interesting that you bring that up because I, you know, I align with that very much as well. Um, yeah. Very much. I think it's, you know, I, I approach business as a human to human, you know, um, part and it's that data of emotion can quite often just be business to customer, get, let's get the volume in, get the numbers in. Yeah. Always, and, um, and I think it took, it took a, another coach to say, to, I'd said something like, this is what I think, but I don't have the ever I don't have any data to back up. And he said to me, he's like, why would you need data to back up your opinion? Or your instinct. Uh -huh, your instinct. And he's like, has that ever failed you before? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, but did anything bad happen? No. He's like, so if, if your intuition is wrong, then your intuition is wrong. Like yeah. it's, at the end of the world, you're not going to, nobody's going to die and like the yeah. world isn't going to implode because your intuition was off kilter. Um, so that kind of get, I was like, ah, actually, that's a good point. Like, I like that. Or nearly 44 yeah. years old. Like, and also, you, I feel like you'd rather trust your intuition and take that leap than, you know, to go off anything else. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Obviously, we talked about previous challenges and things you've been doing. And obviously, right now, business is really good, you're healthy, family's healthy. Um, what's some of the challenges that you do have at the moment? Um, time. Yeah. Time and still on a roller coaster of, you still don't know what tomorrow will bring. Yeah. You still don't know what tomorrow could bring. Like, and genuinely it's, there's some months that you'll be sitting on the last working day of the month and you're like, I've not hit, my financial goals for this month and then suddenly a call's booked in and you're like oh my god and the person becomes a client and you're like oh my god it's the last day of the month and I have had my financial goals and then there's some months that you've got five working days left and you're like oh I've over exceeded yeah. and then there's some months you've got five days left and you're like there's no way in hell I'm getting anywhere near target and then boom it happens so it's that roller coaster but I think that's probably why most entrepreneurs do it because they like, like if life was always very safe, not many people would. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I've, I've actually, uh, I noticed that a lot with some of the personal clients I work alongside is that fluctuation, that up, up and down. And it, you know, is relative to necessity at the time as well. So I've changed that now by we only really focus on the average numbers for a quarter. Yeah. And that's helped that um, that headspace dramatically, mm -hmm. dramatically, because ultimately high ticket, I talk about this a lot in some of the coaching I do, is five yeses compared to five noes in the early stages of your business can change everything. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the emotional roller coaster right there. So it's just yes. sticking with the game long enough so that you can get those five yeses, because then you realize everything can change so quick. Yeah, that's mental. So, so and I think that the other thing that's, really still surprises me is how emotional it still is mm -hmm. like how personally involved I get on transformation consults and it's one of those ones I'd always said to myself this will get easier this will get easier <laughs> you won't become so attached you won't become and but you do because every, like everybody's yeah. got I don't want to say a tragic story that makes everybody sound like a victim but everybody's got a backstory yeah. we and have some this but everyone, everyone's on their own journey. Yeah. It's like the, the name of the podcast is, is there for a reason. <laughs> I love it. So um, I have a question I ask everyone that's come on to um, the podcast so far, but it's also one of the questions I use for my coaching is um, what advice would your future self give you in this current moment? Go with your gut. And it's coming to you. I like that. I like that. I do have that, yeah. Is it wrote somewhere? No. Well, it actually says here, turn off the hustle. <laughs> there you go. I like it. <laughs> turn off the hustle. No, it's coming. Everything that you want is just around the corner. That's awesome. 
I like that approach a lot. I think that question for me is just so powerful in that you can use it at almost any stage and it can help you actually take comfort in the place that you're at right now. Um, but it also gives you an indication or a signal of like what you're potentially not doing, what actually you're not taking, which can be really, really powerful. It is really interesting, actually, because this whole that whole new approach that I talked about there, the way the business is going, that's this time last year, I was probably saying the same thing, but I hadn't done anything about it. I was just thinking about it, no idea what to do, how to do it. And I was like, you know, if this is what I want. If I want to become less attached to having hour phone calls with people, I have to do something. I'm in charge here. Like, I am the one that's in charge. You're like, uh, oh, what would Emma do? Hmm, what would you do? <laughs> like, is that kind of conversation that you have to have yourself? Yeah, you can almost, in a way, disconnect. Mm -hmm like from where you're currently at which is really interesting that it's that whole it's that whole what would your future self do and that's what we ask our clients as well when they get stuck with something like what would the future you do powerful very powerful mm -hmm. so um and we've gone so through so many different things this has been so so much fun um there's gonna be a lot of people i feel reaching out for uh to Aww, follow you, to support you. And your friends. <laughs> what would be the best way for someone to connect? <sighs> we are going to have all of your socials and links and everything, yeah. all the descriptions and uh, everywhere this is posted. But where's the best place for someone to go? Probably Facebook, Emma McElhenney, which is ridiculously hard to pronounce, but it's not really <laughs> McElhenney. Um, uh, or Instagram. But I, I tend to be more on Facebook, to be honest, because that's where my my ladies all tend to be but I do I, I do personally love Instagram but I have I follow a ridiculous amount of CrossFit athletes and just go oh my god I wish I was that strong oh my god I wish my shoulders look like that <laughs> yeah I've uh I've actually basically come off Instagram for that okay. reason of the every time I was going onto Instagram I left not feeling like better about myself oh no i, I come also going right i am going to train and Dale's yeah. like at half past nine at night <laughs> you're not <laughs> you probably got a uh that's probably a better way to approach it is you're using it as fuel whereas oh, i'm like cool i'm gonna shut that off and i'm just gonna stay in my uh my place i oh, love it and it's like it's so so inspired by just all these people that can do incredible things yeah it's just nuts yeah, that's a bit of my my background. That the old CrossFit. Uh huh. I uh -huh. it was um. And we'll wrap this up in a second, but it was over ten years ago that I done my uh, level one. Was it really? Wow. Yeah, I'm now not qualified to coach CrossFit. My certs have all ran out. You know, I spent thousands and thousands and thousands on all these qualifications, and now they were. Well, oh, it did get you around the world. It did get me around the world, so I definitely cannot convey. It. And I met some amazing people, so. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, Emma, thank you so, so much for joining me. This has been loads and loads oh, no. of fun. Um, and I'm excited for you in what you're doing with the business. I'm excited for the changes that you're making because I really see how that's going to impact people to uh, even more and more people because I know the program you actually have is unbelievable. Um, so yeah, full credit to you. A An amazing journey from selling your programs at basically three pound an hour <laughs> to, uh, to where you're at now. <laughs> So many people. Uh, uh, um, if you're still around when I die, you have to. You, I bet you, you will. We need to get that in our headstone at some point. <laughs> work I for three pounds an hour. I love it. I love it. But yeah, it's been amazing to watch that journey and to see you keep growing. So, and I'm grateful to call your friend as well. So, thank you Aww, for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam.